Good morning and welcome to the Sports Buffet on Elevator TV Radio. It's a Monday morning. My name is Indafi Matthew. So, you love to come in the Elevator One of Sports. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. If you're an Arsenal fan, you obviously had a wonderful weekend. And uh, if you're a Tottenham fan as well, you're happy. If you're Juventus fans, you're not. If you're a fan of uh, Liverpool, sorry, if you're a fan of uh, Bayern Munich, you're not. If you're a fan of uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid, you're pretty much very happy. And Barcelona fans will be wondering. Look at these clubs in Germany that are taking uh, Bayern Munich at, you know, like snipers. But then they come to the Champions League and beat us. What's the, what's really going on? Okay. And then if you're a fan of um, Juventus, you'll be wondering, okay, different teams are taking points off Juventus. But Monza, like, like Monza, 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 like you're playing against AC Milan. Well, maybe because it's... Uh, Monza is owned by Silvio Berlusconi. And you know how Berlusconi always, Berlusconi always wants to get one over Inter Milan and uh, Juventus, maybe invoke the spirit of uh, Rico Saki and uh, the entire old generation of AC Milan. I don't know, but I mean, a lot of teams can beat Juventus, but uh, that they lose to Monza and uh, Anga Di Maria got a red card. I think it's time to let uh, Allegri go, okay? Uh, that's just my thought, so I don't know, but... Uh, I think it's time to let Allegri go. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe I'm overthinking. I don't know, but that's just what I think. But if you if you have a different opinion, talk to me about it. And uh, the talk is uh, now on for the exit of Brendan Rogers, or the one I love to call Sergeant Rogers. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think about the Juventus situation? What can they do to make a change? Because it's getting from bad to worse. Napoli defeated AC Milan, so. Once again, Napoli have proven that they are early starters, but is this the season where they go on to win uh, the league again after the Maradona 1989 win? Uh, that's a question for you guys to answer. Bayern Munich uh, not really doing too well at home. Is this the season Borussia Dortmund, you know, you saw them after 10 or, is it 10 or 11 a consecutive title win? And uh, there is this one that really got me, especially with a lot of Nigerians complaining, why did they take the headies to the United States of America? It's a Nigerian award for Nigerian artists. Why take it abroad? Well, you have the Champions League leading clubs are considering a controversial plan to play meaningful Champions League games outside of Europe, with the US, China, and the Middle East all viewed as possible hosts for group stage matches, okay? Where do we go from here? The Portuguese or my Latin people will say COVID is. Where do we go from here? Well, I want you guys, you guys are my analysts, you guys are my co-presenters, so get in on the conversation and tell me what you think. Well, racism, like I always said, would never go out of the game, would never go out of Europe. It is what it is, okay? So there are two classes of people in every society, the elite and then the, the bourgeois and the the peasants or whatever you call them. So the elites, the things that they say behind closed doors that nobody can see is what the peasants or the regular people say publicly. So whenever you see something going on in the country and you know people are complaining and nothing is being done, it is because even the people who have powers to do it love it. They are in support of it. That's why nothing has been done about it. Because if you want to do anything, you do. And then in Scotland, there was uh, a backlash to clapping in the 70th minute. You know, the 70th minute represents the 70 years that the Queen reigned. And I don't know where football agreed that when you get to the seventh minute, 70th minute, whatever you are doing, whether the game is on or not, everybody in the stadium should stand up and start clapping. Okay, well, a minute of clap. People, things get invented every single day. But then, they went to Scotland and then they decided to change it uh, to something else that is not, you know, good. I, well, how, how do I feel? I'm indifferent about it. Jose Mourinho got sent off uh, after furious reaction to being denied a penalty as Maverick Roma boss has to be restrained from confronting the referee by his coaching staff 
in defeat to Atalanta. They lost 1 0. Let's not forget that one. AC Milan fell by two goals to one at home to Luciano Spalletti's side with a trillion cutter as the San Siro Times. Uh, and the Sanzio Times to lift header from Giovanni Simeone as they return to the top of Syria. Hey, uh, somehow, 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 this Napoli is beginning to look like a team on the agenda. But then this is not the first time they've shown us that they are a team on the agenda. And just recently, all of a sudden, uh, the English FA are finally admits are giving the flowers to somebody who deserves it. And this is what he said in an exclusive interview with the Daily Mail. The headline says, I was forgotten cast aside. Ben Odeji was the first black man to represent England, but only now, 51 years later, at the FA celebrating his achievement. Damn. You know, black people, what do black people even do with yourself? Why are people afraid of black people? Why are people always trying to put down black people? What did we really do? Okay. We are top of the league. I'm so happy Mikel Ateta reveals Arsenal used being kicked off the top of the table as motivation against Brentford with the Gunners boss annoyed at wins for City and Spurs. Why are you annoyed? Come on, focus on your team. Win your matches, okay? And then Arsenal now have the youngest ever player to play in the Premier League. I was just looking at that game and I was saying to myself, what if this boy comes on and just go and just maybe just the boy just hit him and enter the net? I recall go out to break for 15 years, 100 and something days. Okay. Well, that's good. While the Gabriel was paying tribute to Vinicius Jr., uh, you know, after scoring and dancing somewhere in Madrid, at Atletico Madrid, at the Wanda Metropolitano, the Madrid, uh, Atletico Madrid fans were booing and racially abusing Vinicius Jr. But he didn't stop Real Madrid from winning the game to go to one. I think uh, the only thing missing from that game was Vinicius Jr. not scoring. It would have been very, very nice anyway. Uh, the British press are in over their head on this one, saying that uh, Silas Ferguson used fear as an instrument to win the treble. Now, the signs of the treble winning team are showing in this current team. Please, 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 where is uh, my where is Johnny Gaffa and the rest of the Manchester United fans when you need it? Is this Manchester United team anything like the team that won the treble? I need to hear from you guys, but you know how we do the show. I'm going to go give you the news, the headlines and the news. But before then, I need you guys to tell me, what do you think about, um, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, Juventus situation? Uh, is this the season that Bayern get off stage from the top of the league table? Uh, is Manchester United currently, as they look and as they play, anything that resembles the squad that won the 1999? Where is their own Roy Kane? Is... Uh, uh, Eric Zindi, Roy Kane. Where is their post goals? Is that Bruno Fernandes? Where is their Andy Cole and Dwight Joe? I don't know. You guys need to tell me. Where is their Ryan Giggs? Is Jonathan Sancho Ryan Giggs? Uh, those are some of the questions that I need you guys uh, to answer for me. Well, if you don't have answers to that, I don't know. Then the uh, sad one for Remo Stars. My favorite anointed team uh, of Nigeria playing on the continent. They lost at home. I remember saying last week that, on Tuesday, that even though they... They got a draw away. I think that they have the toughest opponent, a team that can come to their ground and do something. And you know how beautiful their stadium is sometimes. Anybody can play there. The thing with having a good stadium is that it becomes an advantage even to the opposition. And so it was that they lost at home. But let's go to the headlines and then look at the story as put together by my very own wing, wonderful wingman, Timothy Dehimbo, uh, who is also a prolific writer on our website www.elevatedtv.com please uh, do well to reach out there and uh, see what's going on there okay uh so there is a, a a grill a grill house around aja if you can order i mean we got into a bit of a partnership last week and um, they are fantastic i know that in ikeja you have the grill the grill wonderful guys and in aja you've got grills and more Okay, catfish, so many more. Just search them out on Instagram, grills and more, and you will see what I'm talking about. You can place your order. The good thing is you get a 10% discount if you mentioned that you got to hear about them from Elevator TV and Radio. So that's a good one uh, if you want to do like a birthday gift offer, uh, uh, gift to someone, you want to take people, uh, buy lunch for your office people, and you know, spicy uh, um, catfish, turkey, chicken, 
parfait, roasted plantain, well, sliced and diced or whatever we want it done and a host of all the things that you could request. Just check on that menu. You will see that. I think it's good anyway. But then let's hit the ground running and see what else, what's on the plate from um, uh, Timothy Daimbo and uh, then we'll take it from there. Cup Champions League and Cup Conference Cup. Rivers United, Betty United, Quara United Progress, Remo Stars, Crash out. Ooh, that's sad. Okay, Yannicka gets a debut call as Pesero named 25-man squad for Algeria Friendly in Iran. All right, I'll give you the full list in the new segment. Aima recruits Akani, Elijah, and three others. Okay, and I hope they do well. I don't know if the, they still got Timothy Devil will tell me if they still got uh, Finney Judge there. Alex will be credit Lampard for his. Everton turn around, and I'm gonna talk about Alex will be a bit for those people who used to say that I was beefing him, I was too much of this case. This Alex will be versus the old Alex will be. Let's just put it on the on the plate. This current Alex will be versus the old Alex will be. Which one would you do you prefer? Because there was a time when I said he doesn't know how to play football, he was wasting, he was just playing, it was useless to the team. Now nah, look, and people say, oh, I mean, you're, you're, you're being too hard on him. He's a good player. He's one of the best players we have. Would you rather have that previous Alex Wobi or this current Alex Wobi? I need your comments in the comment section whether on YouTube or Instagram. Uh, currently, you can send me messages on my personal number or WhatsApp. Uh, the office uh, phone is back. So people complain that uh, they wish to send um, WhatsApp messages. is 0803427765. 0803427765. Okay, uh, let's see how you go. Brighton and over. Abiyam appoints uh, Italian manager as a uh, port up replacement. The good thing was there's still a match on Juventus. That's why I said because Juventus were already talking to him, signing him out to come take over from Allegri. But then uh, Brighton and over. First of all, who would turn down Juventus for Brighton and over? Maybe just want to have the English experience and then get fired and then get paid. I don't know. Okay, we need to do better and get down to action. Marco Landucci, uh, you know who that is? Well, we'll talk about Juventus just now, so you will know, you should know who that is. Bayern CEO, back to Nigelsmann, slams players on poor league form. This type of slamming can backfire, in case you don't know. But let's get to the news. I know what led to all of this headline. The second leg of the Total Energy Scarf Champions League and the CAF Conference Cup. First preliminary round for Nigerian teams have Three of them progressed to the second round uh, stage and one of them crashing out. Okay. Favorite crash that anyway. Petit United, Rest United, Akara. United FC progressed even with uh, blood of whatever, but definitely not blood of Jesus. Splattered on the ground and splattered on the team. And uh, Ubanka, Ubanka, Ubanka was uh, a regular shant as uh, the Quara United chairman was uh, trying to, you know, rebuke the, the voodoo priest. Of the voodoo man, the far priest of uh Benin Republic. Eventually, they see where true cares. Whether you say Obanka, whether you sprinkle blood, blood of whatever you sprinkle, the most important thing is that they made progress. Okay, to the second round preliminary round of the 2022-2023 Cup Champions League and Conference Cup. What Remo Stars bowed that following defeat to AS Far or As Far FC of Morocco. Sorry, I'm sad. Let's see United FC edge is AS Manji of Gabon one goal to nothing to secure a 3-2 aggregate score and progress to the next round of the Cup Champions League on Sunday, September 18. Rivers United FC fell to a 1-0 loss to Watanga FC in Liberia but progressed to the preliminary round with a 3-1 aggregate score. Okay, right, that's a good one. In the CAF, Conference Cup, Quara United played a 0 0 draw after plenty of blood sp spilling and splattering and whatever. And then plenty of Ubanka, Ubanka, Maru, Banka, Maru, Banka. I don't know what that is anyway. Whether that's a bank in Nigeria or a bank in Quara, I don't know. Whatever it is, it is. It's a bank, bank. All I, all I was hearing was bank, bank. You know, today is bank holiday in the UK. Okay. So maybe it's bank, bank. He was telling them, don't worry, don't sprinkle blood. Pay the money of this so blood send it to my bank, my bank, my bank. I don't know. And you know, if you understand the language, what about coming, you can tell me. Okay, on Sunday evening in the J Republic to edge AS Duanes of Miami, three goes to nothing on aggregate to reach the next track. Remus Stars first club out out of the calf. Ay, that hurts. That hurts, you know. 
all the value jet, private jet, all the beautiful thing that I wanted to talk about. This team all disappeared. And Kalijai, you're going to get into trouble, yeah, with this exit. And you know, you trouble when you come to the office, trouble is waiting for you. Okay, uh, Remo Stars Club, bad at the cap commission of Scott Following one zero loss tomorrow, can sign as far FC at the Remo Star Stadium. The first leg in Morocco had ended one one draw on Sunday, September 11. Okay, it is what it is. Okay, 2022, before the experienced Moroccan club ended the Sky Blues journey with victory in Nigeria on Sunday evening. In the second leg preliminary round of the CAF Champions League, the two United FC would take on Tunisian club Esperance, while Rivers United FC will play last season's champions Wilder Casablanca, right? Quara United FC will face uh, CAF Confucius Cup champions ROSB Bakani in the preliminary round of the competition. Why are we facing all these heavyweights so early? Can't we just meander it and uh, well, it's the draw. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. But uh, you beat these teams, then you are pretty much ready and expectation will be on you. Well, well we, let's uh, leave club football and go to national team. Let's not forget that we're going into the international break now. The head coach of the Nigerian Super Eagles, Joseph Pesero, has named the 25-man squad for the friendly against Algeria on Tuesday, 27th of September in Oran, Algeria. The new the new face of the team is Rafael Oyedika of Club Root, okay, uh, with Kevin Akpoguma, Akpoguma also making a return to the fold. Uh, Three-time African champion Nigeria and two-time African champions Algeria, Nigeria, Algeria, okay, clash to play of water. At the 40,000 Stadium, the Olympique in Oran on Tuesday, 27th of September, with the invited players expected to confluence in the city of Constantine. Uh, today, Monday, 19th uh, September, Leon Balogu and Henry Oyekuru, who had initially gotten a call, were replaced by Valentine uh, Ozonfo and uh, Emmanuel Dennis, respectively. Okay, uh, maybe due to injuries or something, I don't know, but. They'll be replaced. So if you want to know the full list of uh, these players, let me break it down for you. Goalkeeper Francis Ozor, Maruka Okoye, Adele Adibayo are the goalkeepers that have been invited. Defenders are William Trust Ekong, who's not played a single game since forever. Kenneth Meru, Chinozi Owazim, Ola Oloa Aino, Kevin Basi, Zairu Sanusi, Kevin Akwaguma, Valentine Ozor, and for and then the midfielders are Wifred and Didi. Frank Oyeka, who came on yesterday, but was too little, too late. Alex Iwobi, Rafael Oyedika, the most talk about the reef of the moment. Still, Asian of Days, forever consistent. Ahmed Musa leads the forward with Kelechi Hanacher, Moses Simon, Samuel Chukwuzi, Ademola Lukman, Emmanuel Dennis, Tawa Waniyi, who scored on Saturday, but his team ended on the losing side. New uh, Nottingham Forest with 22 new signing. They made more signing at the point that they've accumulated so far in the season where nobody's getting up to 22 points, so you can't blame them. They might change it along the line. Uh, Chida Rajuki, Siri Dessa, Terry Murphy. Uh, um, for those of you looking for Napoli, man, he's still out injured with a tie injury. So I'm talking about Victor Osime. And uh, let's come back to Nigeria. Top MPFSI Eimba Football Club of Aba, popularly known as the People's Elephant, Zabu Zabu Eimba. I've reached an agreement to sign four players to the team. The Abba side had a dry window since the transfer window opened in August, but uh, they've not reached an agreement, okay? They've not reached an agreement to sign three forward and a midfielder. Midfielder Akami Elijah has joined the, the Abba side from MFM FC, who relegated last season. Center forward Sunday Okereke will arrive from Nasarawa United and will be joined by Moses or Modu MK and uh, Ademola Adibambo, okay? Okereke comes with the dreaded reputation of being a goal testy forward following an explosive half-season spell with Nasarawa United last season. Nasarawa United can keep players to save their life. Our model in case, uh, joined from 3SC where he established himself as a dependable force, scoring a goal and creating another as Eimba lost 0-2 to 3SC in Ibada last season. Omakwara United forward Ademola Adebambo will also line up for Imba in the new season after reaching an agreement to join the People's Elephant after a spell with Otasolo FC. Good one. Otasolo FC were in the finals of the Lagos State FA Cup this um, few months ago where they lost 
three nil to uh, Dallas FC. Alex Iwobi is the revolution now. It's the one everybody's talking about. So let's do a little bit of um, catching up with him. Yeah, like I asked the question: the current Alex Iwobi versus the previous Alex Iwobi. Which one would you prefer? Nigerian midfielder Alex Iwobi has credited Frank Lampard impact on him since joining Everton. Iwobi, who has been uh, so instrumental to the Toffees this season after getting their first win of the season yesterday, said. Okay, and then he traded the pass really out of the middle. And that guy, you know, the pass he gave to Mape was a good one. Okay, we have been playing really well. The performance were good. It was just about getting the results and getting the win. It's a great way to go into the international break. I didn't get off to a great start at Everton. I always have the mindset to prove people wrong. The manager has given me fit uh, to do so. And uh, he allowed me, he allows me to express myself like I do in training, and I have been able to do that in matches to repay the fit. Ever since I came through as an Arsenal academy player, I have always liked to move the ball forward on a half turn. Now I am taking the ball uh, full turn and trying to get up the pitch, which is good, which is good. I just hope that you continue in this. And then when you come to the Super Eagles, we also saw this performance and improve on it. And I also wish that um, you would uh, uh, improve in your free kick taking. Sometimes when I see him take free kick, I'm like, Alex, really? Really? What's that? What, 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 what? You think we're joking yet? You think we're playing Kalo Kalo? Yeah, right? Okay. But for now, let's be happy with the uh, half turn and full turn, whatever that is in, in, in the average, the minds of the average football fan. What's that? Just turn and play the ball. Don't come and give us tactical jargons that we don't understand. Brighton have appointed former chapter Donetsk and uh, Sassuolo boss Roberto De Zerbi as their new manager. The Italian has been out of work since July after leaving Shakhtar Donetsk because of the war in the Ukraine. Mm, Timothy Daimbo, you will do frog jump I'm um, just telling you now. He was Brighton's first choice to replace Graham Potter, who replaced Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea this month. Bright, Thomas, uh, what's the Graham Potter is always abandoning people. This man cannot be trusted in a relationship. Okay, Everywhere he's been at his job ship, when you see people with bigger money. So it's a sugar daddy kind of guy, right? Former Napoli manager, De Zerbi, who impressed during three years in charge of Italian clubs as solo with beautiful attacking football, has brought his coaching staff with him, although all we need work permit. Now, this is something that amazes me. In Nigeria, when you employ coaches, they don't come with their coaching staff. Mm? But over there, over there, over there, in the yonder side of life, they always bring their coaching staff. Okay, I hope that we will learn how to do that anyway. That's why Nigerian sports journalists always don't understand why when they play foreign national team coach, they come with their staff and they were complaining. Even the coaches here, yeah, they're using us to carry water. You don't know that this is how it work. Eh? You don't know. You don't know. Forget about it. Okay, you go and learn. He flew to England on Friday night and watched a behind closed doors friendly at the MS Stadium on Saturday. Okay, somebody is complaining that they need to do better. Juventus assistant manager who stood in for suspended Max Allegri on Sunday's game against uh, Monza. I said the only way out of their current situation is to work hard and do better. The old lady suffered a shocking loss to Monza as the newly promoted side got their first ever win in Syria. Wow. Speaking to the media after the game, Lenducci uh, said, quoting from footballitalia.net, he said, we need to do better. Certainly, the red card affected the game. That's the red card to Angel Maria, in case you don't know. Angel was a bit harassed by Iza, a player who we know uses these tactics, and uh, he fell for it. I didn't see the replay. I was told it was the right decision to send him off. Landushi told Dazen, okay? Uh, we had a few chances to score in the second half, but this is the time where uh, talking doesn't achieve much. We need to go down to action and put in the work. Obviously, nobody is happy right now, but in order to emerge from the situation, we can only work hard and do better. We seem to start well and then stop playing. So the only method is to work and everybody raised, everyone raised their game to work in the same direction. Let's hope that happen. From one club complaining to another club, let's see what uh, the CEO of Bayern Munich uh, says about uh, the players and then their coach Julian Nigosma. Bayern Munich are winless in four Bundesliga games after losing to Augsburg, but uh, Julian Julian Nigosman still has the backing of the club's hierarchy. 
Despite a strong start to the Champions League campaign, Bayern Munich are struggling domestically. The German champions have drawn three and lost one in their last four Bundesliga game on the bounce with a 1-0 reversal at Augsburg on Saturday, keeping pressure on Nagelsmann. However, Bayern CEO Oliver Kahn, okay, this guy, a no-nonsense goalkeeper back in the day, who will never forgive Austin Jejo Kocha for embarrassing him permanently on the global stage. And uh, I think in 2002, too, uh, Brazilian Ronaldo uh, with a very weird and funny haircut that nobody should copy also embarrassed him by winning the World Cup ahead of them. But then he came home as the player of the tournament. However, Bayern CEO Oliver Kahn has offered his full support to the head coach telling German outlet Sport One, we are totally convinced of Julian. Of, his, of course, he's uh, consigned everyone is, but we are convinced of Julian. Okay, you see... The dreaded vote of confidence is a very terrible thing. Once you get it, you're close to a sack in football. Okay, can instead point out the finger of blame at the players, adding some players probably believe the Bundesliga can be secondary. Uh, that's unacceptable. Okay, when did the Bundesliga become secondary for Bayern Munich? Okay, I know that they, they won quite a few uh, jam, uh, what's it called Champions League, but I don't think that the Bundesliga is secondary to them. But let's come back to uh our conversation there's a whole lot on the plates i'm saying that does this manchester united in any way resembles the manchester united that won the trouble in 1999 because that's what uh, somebody says in the english media uh the racism at uh, the wonder metropolitano uh what do you make of it and then uh, you remember you can also ask a question so i'm not the only one asking the question here you can also ask a question and i'll be very very open to answer you when you knock on uh my door with your question. I'll be here. So let's make a better use of the remaining 32 minutes that we've got on the show. As it always is, it's a it's a pleasure to be here uh, having a conversation with you. Let me start with the guys on Instagram. There's, a, uh, there's quite a few uh, comment there that is there already. Uh, let me, let me you know, take that one and then move on. Mr. Smiles, it says, a good morning, Elegant, a good morning to you. And then we have Saviki. He said, playing European games outside the... Aside the Europe would be a good idea as it it will see uh, Ms. Uh, Victor Malalu, you repented before now you started again. Go and throw your phone inside water if your phone is making you type upside down. Okay, let me read you the way you put it. Uh, playing European games aside the Europe would be a good idea as it will it will football development in those uh, continents as they will pick up. Some learning from it. Now, so you take right hand. No, 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 it's just what it is. The same way when you go into the stadium and pray. I mean, some people don't, it doesn't make sense to some people. That's what they know how to do. There's no big deal about it unless you want to take it to your own level. So I think now I want to say it will be have improved tremendously. Uh under Lampard, he play better now, registering uh his full presence on the pitch. I hope Kelechi can also step up. His game, I don't think Kalechi will step up his game. Kalechi does not think he needs to improve his game. You know, the thing about improving in any field of life is when you think you need to improve, when you think that, okay, there's work that needs to be done, when you start searching for answers, Kalechi does not look to me like somebody who's searching for answers. Kalechi looks to me like somebody who thinks he have more talent than even Maradona, Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Anga Di Maria, or whoever put together. So what is that? I mean, what is there to improve? Um, that's why I say I have watched two... Uh, Cremonese's game now and not really seeing what Siri Dessas offers. Um, I remember you people almost killed Ganotro for not inviting Siri Dessas. So, uh -huh. so look on uh, not nobody should complain about him. So, Vicky, say please, when is Brenda Rogers getting this debut now? Your club, you know, fo focus on your hopeless jersey. Uh, uh -huh. Please leave, leave him. Uh, please, when Rogers getting is. Is better. I don't understand. Um, Saviki say I think Tuku will later get by a job. I, there's a possibility. There's a possibility of that. I see that coming. Uh, I don't know when that would happen, but I see that coming very, very soon. Okay, let me go to YouTube and see what you guys are saying. This my family house. Yeah, that's what I call it. 
This is my business. YouTube is my business. Uh, 69 Lemar, he said Rema will be back in the continent next season. They have a good setup. Uh, they'll be top of the league and will do better. Let's, I don't think they will top the league, but I think they will qualify for the continent. Top the league, and that's a very, very big ask. Uh, their players, I think that their players lack experience. Uh, I mean, as much as I think right now they are the only professional club in Nigeria, and uh, they, they know what they're doing on the management side is fine. They have a good infrastructure. Um, like the facility is wonderful and then the branding is excellent they could improve they could do better but for now they are good i also think that Quarry united have, have you know captured my attention uh, but i think that uh, as they progress in the tournament it'll be easy to beat because some of our players look pretty heavy and uh, decision making sometimes is very very slow and then they, they, they make the wrong decision but they progress against a very weak opposition reverse united is reverse united there's nothing to take away from them having said that I I look at um, Platina, I didn't I didn't see Platina United team so I really won't say anything. But then if you're coached by Finelli's Electric, you obviously uh, know that you will be full of running, full of creativity because that's what he likes to play. He, he likes to play like he's the African Pep uh that that one set. So, but I think that Quarry United, if they meet a fast team, a team that can really push the ball around, they would suffer. I think their players are a bit heavy. That's my my thinking. They might prove me wrong. Uh, Mr. Smart is in Napoli. Uh, recruitment top notch. That uh, short man, uh, Labotka, doing the Lord's work for in DM. Yeah, very, very good job. That makes it easy for Anguiza to move forward. Uh, but I think that their best signing is that guy that they call the Georgian guy that they call Faradona. Man, that guy is incredible. Like, he's an incredible player because I, I think that's a whole lot Osime can learn from that guy. Now, this is not me saying Osime is not a good player. You know how much I love Osime. Osime is incredible, he's good. But you see, Osime lack movement and positioning sometimes. Osime runs, it's all over the place. But then if you look, uh, what makes a player like Haaland different is the ball is coming from the left. You know how to peel off from his marker. Os Osime stays with his marker, more like uh, there's nothing you can do. While that is a bold move, it makes you get injured easily. Sometimes you just have to avoid the brawl. You have to avoid the... Bros, I don't want to pronounce that name. I know that they call him Faradona. That's enough. That I care whether I can have a Jewish. I don't want to know. That's speaking in talk. That name is speaking in talk. But you know what I'm talking about. Now, I, I think that Usime stays too much with his marker. And sometimes it's always in the middle of two players. That is recipe for continuous injury. With time, you've got to learn that sometimes you just need to pull yourself up from your marker unknowingly to them. Just shade yourself into space because what football is all about go back and study the Zaggies of this world the um Marco Van Basten's of this world uh Inja Gabriel Batistuta even Olivier Bell you have a man you know all of these strikers who pack a lot of even Terry Hurry with all his speed and his power and his guile and his craft and everything he also knows how to peel off from the striker because what that does for you is when the ball falls to you you are settled and then you also uh, see the game from a very open, broad view, and you can decide what pockets to put your ball within the fall walls of the goal. But when you're in the midst of defenders all the time, one, your decisions are hurried decisions, and uh, challenges can be very rash and brash, and, you know, injuries can come. But, I mean, I think I, I love that guy, that player, that for another guy. Ruth Van Nistelrooy, thank you very much for mentioning Ruth Van Nistelrooy. That's another one. Alan Shara as well, Dwachok and the cool. You know, we can go on and on. Magnet is here. You can go on. Not everybody can be brutally uh, powerful like John Fashion. You know, so you've got to be able to peel yourself up from your marker and then for, it gives you enough time to focus on goal. Uh, Lucatelli, uh, Christian Vieri, uh, Alberto Ginardino, you know, all those guys. You know, I'm, I'm going to call my entire accessory line now. And, uh, you know, uh, Duna Yuramileko says, good morning. And if for you went to shout, uh -huh. do you think uh, they should let Allegri leave and try a new style with a new manager? I think they should let him go. Uh, but the thing is, if you let Allegri go, uh, Tottenham Espo Empire will shake. Because I do believe that uh, what now they are holding on to him and hoping that by the end of the season, they can lure Antonio Conte back. Juventus is a club that likes to stick with what they know. It's, it's a case of the devil you know is better than the angel you don't know. But as the case is going, 
they keep losing. And you know the funny thing, all the games and the dropping points is against smaller teams that they should be winning. And then, you know, I'm one of those who don't believe that the smaller team, you know, how the, the people used to say, my people would say, if a 60 year old man naked in front of a 19 year old girl, their age mate in bed, okay, <laughs> because that 19 year old girl would be called the old man baby. So when you're playing in the same league, I'm not one of those people. Maybe I'm looking at it from a footballer side because in the dressing room, no, there's no coach that tells you uh, we want to win this big team to prove a point. No, in football, you always say let's get our let's get our three points as best as possible, as much as possible first to avoid relegation, second to qualify for Europe, then thirdly to win the league. So when you're playing and and when fans talk about oh they they cannot beat big teams, who cares about big teams? If you beat Man City, you get three points. If you beat Leicester City with the bottom of the league table, you get three points. So what makes a team big? There's no big team about it. Just pick more three points than every other opposition and you're good to go. That's the way football is. That's how, you know, uh, football fans will always be fans, but the business people would focus on the business of the game. Having said that, I think that if Juventus needs to sack him, they, they should. But now you ask yourself, who's the coach that's available? Uh, the Zabi that they should have even go to He's already gone to Brighton, Brighton and Hope Avion. And then uh, the only coach that uh, they would go back to who know his way around the Juventus whole arena is Antonio Conte. Would he be willing to leave the project that he's doing at sports right now, especially looking at the way they're doing? And then he's got a very robust, robust squad that he can rotate at will and see how it goes. I don't think that they're going to win the league, but uh, the form of the other teams, teams like Chelsea, who are in the self implode mission, I don't think Chelsea are going to be in the top four anymore. I'm not counting them. If they do, they'll surprise me. It will be a very big surprise. And, um, you know, I also think that if Liverpool don't get their act together quick enough, they just might not always be lucky to get a last-minute Matic header to, to give them a win. Uh, they just might also struggle. That leaves the, the top four for Man City winning the title. Uh, strange as a sound. Arsenal in second place. I think that Manchester United will come second at the end of the day anyway. I just think that Manchester United has got something in them. That makes them better than Arsenal in terms of speed. They've got more speed, and in the Premier League, speed is always very, very important. And unless they get uh, maybe serious pile of pile up of injuries, Arsenal is going to be in the top four definitely. Now it's looking like Chelsea sold their place, so Spurs can retain their place again. That's why I see Man United, uh, Manchester City, Man United, Arsenal, and then Spurs. Okay, but it can change as we go in the season. But if they take Conte out of that team, you know, talking about the Juventus situation now. Uh, I don't know who will come in, but it might just destroy this team. The Olari Waju says, good morning, Elegante. Good morning to you. Nice weekend for me. Asna, uh, you are doing well. Duni Remeleko, a.k.a. the Emperor. He said, even the Bayern director came out to support Nigel's man. I still think they will fire him before the end of the season if performance don't improve. Beautiful football from my darling Asna Sharp. Yeah, yeah, so beautiful football. And that made you go to Twitter and be arguing upside down. And the players were not uh, available. Players were injured. The players that played the match were they Quara United players or FC Taraba players? Eh? When they lost to Crystal Palace. Excuses, excuses everywhere. Okay. Uh, the other one you say, Man United can only win the trouble, not treble. Jesus Christ. You guys are wicked. No, they just they said they look like them. Do you agree that they look like them, not like they were winning? Now, this guy, you mean, you know, uh, lead AJ Ward. You said Ramon Stars was really good. First time I watched a Nigerian club play. Oh, they're good, but I'm just sad that they lost. I thought they would go to the next round, gain that experience, and bring it back next season. They are lost in the next round, they'll be fine. But after going away to get a draw, I thought that they should have held their own. Worst case scenario, you know, play a goal, let's draw. But hey, football is football. These things happen. So nobody's going to, I'm not going to sit here and blame them for anything. Okay. Odiri, you remember, like I say, Helen Haaland has scored or assist in every single Premier League game he has played in this season. Beast, according to him. Okay, I know Latunji Manuel. He said, I definitely prefer the current will be who you were right about him at the time. You made your assessment about him. Latunji Manuel went on to say, You once said football is not really a lucrative investment, but why do you want more rich men like Dangote and Otedola investing in the league if football is not so much of a lucrative investment? Uh, yeah, football is not a lucrative investment for the investors because I've, I've barely seen anybody who invested in football and became super rich. But then, what's the essence of having money? 
What's the essence of having money? There's a point where, there's a point where you have money too. The reason why I said uh, Dan Gote should come and invest in football is Dan Gote have made the money that he would need for 10 lifetimes, all right, personally. And he's just starting because when that refinery start running, you know, yeah, people will say the overhead. There's, there's no refinery that is not a profit making venture, especially in this part of the world. Okay, so Nigeria could pretty much pretty much now have a, a refinery that supplies not only petroleum products for Nigeria, all this whole aviation problem that we're not buying flight ticket within Nigeria for the same money that it would take for us to go to Ghana and the rest. We could now have you know all of those things locally made and the importation reduced, but then we could also be supplying to other African countries. And when I say we, I'm not claiming it for Nigeria, but Nangote is in Nigeria, so you've got to like we eat. So his investment in football is national de development because when I hear that he's willing to put in two to three or four billion pounds into Arsenal and own it, well, I, I don't think that Kroenke is the way they are. I don't think Kroenke have the money to even get Kroenke to make a decision that he wants to sell their club. They don't. They don't look like a selling uh, a family. They look like people who own it. I just said they should come and invest it in Nigeria, if they have that money to spend, because let me be very honest, if Dangote go put uh, four billion in Asna, buy Asna for four billion, and then decide to invest another one billion over ten years, Dangote cannot, he cannot make the profit back, he cannot make the money back. So it's not lucrative. In an investment that does not have return on investment, it's not lucrative. Well, have you ever wondered why English people don't buy English clubs? Have you ever wondered? Because first of all, English people are very, very stingy people. So they don't think it is the right thing. English man would rather, you know, invest in a fashion, supermarket, uh, restaurant business than invest in football. English people don't invest in the big clubs that you need them to spend billions upon billions upon billions. They know what they're doing. What they've managed to do is to create a league that is a super draw for big money people all over the world. Name one person that have gone into football business, spent big money, and then come out richer than they, they went to. No. <laughs> Let's start from the man who invented the act of spending big money. Silvio Balisconi, 1986. Bought over AC Milan. Ended up bankrupt. <laughs> His media empire, everything collapsed. All right. Now, the thing it does for you is that it expands your network. It creates you more, more circle of friends that you can now pull together. Like he went, and I went to go and bought uh, Monza with Adriano Galeni and the rest of them. Yeah, you can, you can build that kind of family environment. But the truth of the matter is football, in terms of investment, is not a lucrative investment because you can go into football business 10 years. You've not made one error. You're just spending and spending and spending and spending. How many people have that willpower? How many people have that mind? Roman Abramovich bought Chelsea, was the number nine richest man in the world. I agree that just soon after he bought it, there was a tech explosion and everybody was investing in tech, in cryptocurrency and the rest of them. And we're having over you know 400 million uh, people making money becoming billionaires and all that but roman abramovich didn't go up he was going down 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 at the time chelsea was taken was robbed from him at gunpoint by the british government and everybody he had gone down to almost the 200 richest man in the world from number nine that doesn't make sense in 19 years that doesn't make sense to me <laughs> as far as i'm concerned but hey you can you can find more proof and uh, maybe you would understand what I'm saying if you do more of the research. Okay, uh, where did I stop? Where did I stop? Okay, Oduni Ramelako say Milan versus Napoli was also an interesting match yesterday. I enjoyed the game. Yeah, I, I do. I did too. Consistency is what Napoli needs now. Uh, I wish a similar quick recovery. Make uh, if follow enjoy the beautiful moment. I think so too. But what is good with Napoli now is. Uh, before now, if Osime gets injured, it's more like the, the arrowhead is there. But uh, with the Faradona guy, it's, when I call the Faradona guy, you know I'm talking about the Georgian guy that the bot that have is speaking the tongue name. I'm not going to keep myself trying to measure his name because it's not worth it for me. You already know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I think they now have a team that can go on to play just as good as they were playing when other injured players were available. So it's a good one for them. I'm happy for them because... I really would look. I really look forward to seeing them winning the title. Okay, uh, I know that in Italy, AC Milan is my team, but I look forward to them winning the title. I also love Juventus. I won't lie. Uh, I mean, their facility helped to treat my legs, so uh, just that sentiment for them. But I think that Napoli are putting some investment over the years, and they deserve. They deserve to get something out of it. Okay, let's uh, go to this one. Akande Michael, they say, I think the the rate at which Real Madrid is going. 
they will retain the La Liga. I don't think Barcelona can stop them for now. Uh, it's too early. Uh, they will drop points. But Barcelona are not far from them. Barcelona will also drop points. But it's too early to say Barcelona cannot stop them. Barcelona have an attack that people should put an eye on. And uh, I like the way Real Madrid is. Right now, they are not Benzema dependent. Uh, Fanny Vavadi is coming good. Vinny Junior is coming good. Rodrigo is coming good. But I still think that uh, it's a real, like I said at the beginning of the season, it's Real Madrid title to lose. But if they, if they lose guard, uh, Barcelona will be there to pounce. Okay. Uh, thanks to the first game of the season where the fire blanks, Barcelona does look like a team that can score in just about every game. Uh, it might come down to the, the Classicos, uh, but there's one small team out there that would uh, still point off, uh, off Real Madrid eventually. But then Barcelona, also, they could also drop one ball. They are the second in line to the title. That's just who I see it. It's still their title to win, uh, Real Madrid, but Barcelona can pounce if the opportunity is given to them. But I like your position on this. Okay, uh, Steven. He said Iwobi has improved a lot because of the midfield position Lampard plays in now, but uh, he was playing at the wing before and he was very awful. Uh, but when I said at that time, people said, even when they put him in the midfield, he was also awful because he was absent minded, he wasn't focused, and he was turning over possession unnecessarily. But hey, people see, people, you know, in Nigeria, when you critique people and you expect them to improve, people say you're not, uh, you're biased, you're beef, you're hitting on them. Like when I say Mosi Simon, as skillful as he is, he's one of the worst players to play in the spy. Goes, Whoa, why are you saying that? His crosses are bad. That's what you know a winger for. A white player, you're, you'll be judged by your crosses, your delivery. If your delivery is not good, forget all the running, forget all the dribbles. I mean, it doesn't make sense as far as I'm concerned. That's why I don't really read Usman Dembele that much. Like, oh, Usman Dembele. Sometimes his play is wayward. Sometimes he goes for power when he should just do a cutback. Sometimes he just... It's just not there. Yes, he's got prodigious talent. He's got amazing left and right foot. He's got speed. But sometimes it's more of a bias Akedia than if he did the judge. It's more of a bias Akedia than even it's Jani Babangida. So, you know, for me, I don't rate him that high. And I agree that a lot of people say, you know, if your standards are too high, you rate, you, you, you expect too much from footballers. But isn't that what life is? People expect too much from me. You know how many people are telling me already that uh, I should be... Uh, reporting the Nigerian League from every stadium, bringing matches and all that. And I was like, would you give me like $500,000 to buy the equipment that is required to do that? You know, but people don't care. So when people have expectation of me, why shouldn't I have an expectation of people? Especially if it is a game that I played and I know, I mean, I know a thing or two about this game. You know, all about Nigeria. You know how many people call me? Oh, that year video you did, you will have it. Come and do for me. Come and do for our club. You know how many people call me for that? So if you have expectation of me, why shouldn't I have expectation of the players? Why are we lowering the bar like a uh, jam for, for Nigerian footballers? Is there anything wrong with us producing players that are world class? I don't know, but hey, most times people make it look like if you expect Nigerian players to be world class, then you are enemy of the players. Like uh, I always tell some of them when I talk to them, I say, listen, our friendship will not stop me from criticizing you. <laughs> our friendship would not. So I'm, I'm your friend, but if you're not playing well, you're not playing well. I'm going to see it on my show. See it later. Your friends or your family members will uh, take the link I share with you. I don't care. I mean, I'm one of the person whose everyday show is out there online. You can go back and take it and see what I said and what I didn't say. But I like it. I really don't feel any pressure. Somebody sent me a message and asked me, do I feel pressure? Do I think that uh, because I'm doing this thing online now, I I, I fear that uh, people can miss, that that can take take my content and use it against my life. Use it against me. I'm responsible for what I say. I'll stand by it. If I need to apologize, I'm not too proud to Apologize, but well, what when I come when it comes to analysis, one of the things that I know is that I've taught everything through and I checked it up, and then I I know that okay, I'm good at this. I know what I'm saying. It's football. I'm not a stranger to football. I'm not one of those people who feel jam or who finish school and they know where to get a job and then they decide to go to sports. Sports is my thing. Like I know this thing. So if I analyze it, I'm not going to be regretting. Like oh, did you say this? No. But then, just the same way when I when I praise players. It doesn't offend them. They shouldn't get offended when I criticize it. That's why I say Kevin Duffy on Instagram says, Baba, good morning. Oh, I don't think the Milan shift uh, of Balistoni went bankrupt because of Milan. Remember, he pulled money out of Milan to run for election, which he lost. Uh, he was prime minister for many years again. You see this thing, this thing you just deny. It's what most people do. They take half-truths. 
when you say he lost now, somebody who listened to me reading this thing for the very first time, the guy just lost election. I mean, how many years was he prime minister for? Have you checked that? How rich was he? He was a media mogul. Why do you think he take money from Milan to run for election? Why don't you think that he took money from his media to run for election? I, I mean, this thing you just said that it's not true, but you make it sound like it's true. You just take half truth. Yes, he ran for election. Yes, he lost an election. But then he was also prime minister for many years. When he was prime minister, I think he wasn't making money. Sylvia Balisconi got bankrupt because of football. And the reason is Milan at the time was paying more money than any club in the world. Don't forget that Milan shattered world transfer record when people didn't even know, when people could not afford more than a million pounds or a million dollars to buy a player. This guy was already paying 13 million for Lentini, was already paying, uh, how many million did he pay for uh, Jim Parry Papin? Was already paying salaries that would make nobody think of playing for another club. Was buying Ferrari for players as birthday gifts. Enzo Ferrari that they made only 300 and uh, 39 or 399 pieces. I was already buying it. This is a car that you can only have if you pre order it. Come on, bro, stop now. Election campaign, how much? How much is the election campaign? Ross, no, I don't agree with you on that one. That's not what got him broke. It's football. Yes, Shala FC official page. You say Shala FC Football Club is open for sponsorship. Okay, are you talking to me or are you talking to my viewers? Because me, I don't sponsor you. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm just saying. So I'm, I'm not sure you're telling me. Maybe you're telling the people that are viewing. If you're open for sponsorship, put content out that will attract people. It's not just to say we're open for sponsorship. Get your media team to do things that will attract people. Grow your numbers high. And at some point, somebody will say, because of these numbers that you have, we're going to put our, our, our logo on your shirt. How much will it cost? Who and who are you reaching? That's the simple thing. I'm just giving you... I mean, let me let me let me use my my brand as an example. I'm struggling because my numbers have not hit the height. If I have one million subscribers today, I wouldn't even ask anybody for sponsor. People will be sending me every single day. You have people sending me proposals. What can we do together? Look at Arsenal Fan TV. When they were struggling, climbing the numbers from ten thousand to twenty thousand, nobody sent them. Do you know how many shows they do today? They tell you sponsored by this, sponsored by that, partner here, partner that, and you see how their staff their staff strength have increased. Because they don't have money to pay people, they, they have money to travel, whether they're going to the US, whether they're traveling within the country, they're getting involved in charity events and the rest. That's because there's money. So for Shola FC, grow your numbers first. And then also try your best to make one, two or three players make it abroad. And then the return money that comes from it, invest it in your team wisely. Because one of the things that people who run academy do is once they get one player transfer, by the time they get the, the sell-off clause or the money that they pay them, They'll go to Quillos. I'm not running that Quillos business. But you can't use your, your startup money to go and invest in another person established business. You have to return the money back into the business. That's why we're not taught growing up. Our families or schools don't teach us how to turn money and into wealth. Okay? So that must happen. It's a process. Nobody, Everybody's investment is on numbers. If you cannot provide numbers for people... Forget, if you like, you speak in tongue, you speak English, you call a far priest like uh, the fans, the, the Babalao that they call against Para United, you will lose. Let's get past that one. I've got only five minutes on the show. Let's deal with that. Okay. Uh, Olusheye, Ogunda, Ogunda, let's say good morning, Elegote. Uh, where is uh, Paris Ikele? I said, if you did, uh, and then he went on. Elegote is Elegote, no matter what people think. And then he said, did you think uh, Arsenal can challenge for this season? Challenge for this season. What, what are they challenging for? Top four, top six, top seven, definitely not the title. Definitely, you, you're thinking is the title, please. If that's what you're thinking, please rethink. Uh, there's this movie that just is not acted where it was at the police station buying fire. Some guys, some bully were trying to do something, and he told them, Whatever you're thinking, you know, you have to think it again. I've forgotten the name of that movie. You have to think it again. I don't mention Asna and title in the same circle. You know how in 2016, Leicester just went on to win the title. If it so happened, so I'm going to ask you this. I'm going to ask the question. It's a rhetorical question. You might answer or you might not. If you are a fan of Man City right now, and Man City is playing at just gear one, or at best gear two, and this is a car that have like seven gear speed, uh, like my race car, and they're just playing, they're just playing gear one. They just put the, get the gear in L. You know, L will take your car only two gears. And they are winning like this. And you are asking, you're top of the league. 
And Arsenal is another team on top of it, but you're a fan of Man City. Would you say that that Arsenal that you're saying, eh, that Arsenal that you're saying, that when Thomas Partey to get injured, they get beaten 3 1, is the team that would make them not to defend the title? Would you be able to say that? Let's be, let's be fair. Because me, as much as I'm an Arsenal fan, I like to be fair on fair Verona so that everybody, you know, gets it fairly. Just like, oh, I listen to this guy. He's always not seen anything bad with Arsenal. Arsenal have done the incredible. They've done things that most teams, most Arsenal team have not done in previous years. Okay, so in the last maybe 10, 15 years, this is one of the best Arsenal team we've seen. But even at that, there are still weak spots. There are still the soft underbelly there that is there. So Arsenal can keep going. Good enough, they are having time to give people like Marquinos, people like Simi Lokonga experiences. But let's look at that yesterday's game, for instance. Uh, one different type of selection by Frank, uh, what's, what's Thomas Frank, and the result would have gone different. This is my belief. If you saw the game, if Mikael Damstad have started that game, I don't think Arsenal would have had a 3 0 win because Damstad is the only player who was creative enough and was threading passes through that middle. So, say the way Arsenal played. Arsenal played with two pivot uh, defensive midfielder in Kremi Saka and uh, Thomas Partey, who, thanks to the death of the Queen, uh, with, with Arsenal they played match last week, and then the, that delay also made it easy for Thomas Partey to come back from his injury. Now, if you look at that game carefully, Martinelli, uh, Fabio Vieira, who I thought put in a very good shift, and then uh, Bukayo Saka, who is still 45%, and then who again, there's one other person that I forget, I'm forgetting to mention, uh, Granny Saka, put in a good shift. But they were all going forward too many times. And when they lose the ball, the thing was, um, what's it called? Uh, the guy that was playing with Ivan Tony, what's his name, that they changed towards the end of the game. You know, they they were not really in sync. And then there was no supply for them. And that's also thanks to Asna keeping possession that much. But remember when Asna removed Thomas Party and brought in Sibyl Okonga, and then uh, the coach brought in Mikhail Damska, you noticed that they for the very first time start having that penetrating passes and uh, umbuemo thank you very much uh Remilefo. you start noticing that they start having those true passes you start trading passes through the eye of the middle one occasion told me and Antonio was in, uh was in an offside position the other time as uh, um saliva who is grossly underrated but doing a great job was there to intercept and in a few occasions like that if that guy had started the game maybe they would have given us a little run a little shake a little scare moment and things would have changed and uh, gone differently. I'm not saying that Arsenal would have won, but maybe the story would have been different. And in many cases, when, when Arsenal played against Leicester, if Leicester had raised that game just a little bit, maybe the scoreline would have been 4 2, would have been different. Well, I agree that Arsenal this season had the luck of the draw. But then this October is going to be a defining moment. And look at the table carefully. Two wins on the two defeats on the bounce, and Arsenal could fall down to seventh. You know, two defeats on the bounce and result going the way of the other team. Arsenal could fall from priceless top position to seventh and then start climbing a slimy wall to get back to top position. So to mention Arsenal right now as a title contender, it's a tiny little, 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 little too high. The, the toughest position Arsenal played this season is Manchester United. And they failed woefully. But, well, it's not a big deal because if you pick up three points in all other places and lose to all these big teams, you will still make it tougher, but you can't win the title. So let's keep our fingers crossed. And uh, see how it goes, but I think it's too early to mention Arsenal and winning the title. If they are top of the, the league, 13 games gone, eight games to go. I mean, after the World Cup, and then the team in third and fourth, because that's what you always look at. The team in third and fourth are now like 10 points behind, and Man City is the only team chasing them. You, you cannot start talking, okay, eight games to go, Arsenal is in the title race, race based, based on the fact that. Okay, worst case scenario, if they don't win the, the title, they will end up in second position, which should be an astronomical success right now if Arsenal ends up in second. What I think Ateta should do is um, quickly uh, climb up the position where top four is guaranteed and then face the Europa Cup with all he's got. Like I said, if he wins the Europa Cup, the conversation around his name will be different from what we're having right now. But there's still a long time to go, but I don't want any, I don't want to sit where. I'm thinking Asna is in the title race. I can't remember, I can say maybe Villarreal will still point up them. Sha, uh, it's possible. It could still from anybody anyway. Who would have thought that uh, Raya Valicano would, uh, you know, stop uh, Barcelona from scoring with the kind of players they have? Don't forget that they, they had Obama Young at the time as well. 
Uh, Odui Lori Ramalika said, okay, uh, that's the guy. Olushe Ogundola said, uh, but Arsenal are on the up presently. Yes, uh, they could also be on the down soon. Noah Terrain, they say, hey, brother, I hope you are all well. Arsenal is doing quite well. I'm enjoying their success. Me too. Well, just when the, the show is having the beautiful uh, side element to it, the show have come to an end. Okay, okay, let me take these last messages from Instagram, uh, wherever they're coming from. Asna is winning the league. That's according to Mr. Smiles. Okay, keep on smiling. Um, take it or leave it. Okay, that's another. Uh, Mr. Smiles to say, uh, Man United for me, uh, my beautiful club may be fifth. I think Man United will be in the top four, sharp. Except we signed forward in January. You guys have a good team going. Yes, you still need a forward in January, but I don't think that the team is that bad. That's my opinion. I might be wrong, but I am hardly wrong on this one. Talking about wrong now. Uh, somebody sent me a message and he said, uh, it's a, it's a Brian Makorodu. He said, uh, good morning, boss. Ibrahim from Makorodu. He said, I would rather have this Alex Iwobi uh, than the former one. Juventus need to let Allegri go now and start with new coach with another idea. Time for Leicester to let Rogers go. But uh, I think the board too contributed to his failure, not backing it in the transfer. Uh, Ward is, is the worst goalkeeper he was. It's how other people goes anyhow to, to leave behind after Michael left. I hope Remo start qualifying next season. I hope so too. This United team is nothing near the treble winning squad. I agree with you. I just hope Pate can stay fit till season end. That guy in that Arsenal midfield is engine. Okay. Uh, this is where I go. And then somebody sending me a message here. Yeah. Dami, Dami says, good morning, Edafi. I've followed you for a very long time. I'm currently in Asia doing my business in Singapore. And uh, one thing that intrigues me about you is that you always get your prediction right. So I'm going to ask you, I can't remember any, have you ever gotten a prediction wrong? And when you did, how did it make you feel? Obviously, I get, I get. okay, so if it comes to prediction about players or teams, I think I've gotten one wrong. I got one wrong, very, very wrong. And uh I was arguing like a goat uh, when on the sports uh, lounge when Precious or Mustard, the one we called the professor, was explaining that this move is a wrong move. And I said, oh, he's the next uh, David Villa. He's this, he's that. He will score plenty of goals. He will replace Neymar, blah, 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 blah. Right in my face, the guy embarrassed me, shame. And that was uh, Antoine Griezmann move to Barcelona. I think that's the only prediction or projection, proje projectile prediction that I, I made that is like F9. I can't make like more on that one because it was a woeful failure. But other than that, I don't think I don't think I can remember anyone who, that I made a prediction about a player or a club and it went wrong. Like I hardly get that wrong anyway. Uh, I hardly get that wrong. But that is my own. I feel who I don't feel like the white feel it. I feel finish. There is no there's no sweet man to it. I failed completely like. Although, like Mugu, I fail finish. I got that one wrong. Other than that, uh, I don't think uh, I started making this prediction in 2007. And I think that I don't know anybody in the world who's gotten half of what I've gotten in terms of getting it right. But that one, mm, that mean that one was wrong. That one was wrong. It, it's still wrong to today, but every other, <laughs> every other one, one I've gotten correctly. Well, this is where we come to the end of the show today. I think it's been more fun than Monday shows normally is. If this is a sign of what is to come this week, I'm happy already. I'm looking forward to Emmanuel Sebastian tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, I'll be back with you again on the live stream. Uh, I'm going to beg you guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also engage in the comment sections, not only on the live stream. I like what I see on the live stream, but also when we drop content. Engage on it because that's how the algorithm can lift us up. Right now, we are if, if it's a league table, we are where Leicester is. We're on relegation zone, and we really want to get up. Yeah, like when we become premium channel, not like we're not doing good content, we're doing good content. You guys can attest to that. We're trying our best to put out good content, but because people are not engaging it, uh, the algorithm is saying, Oh, people don't like it. And if you guys don't like it, also drop comment and tell me, Oh, we don't like what you're doing. And if you, if, if you think that there's a content we should do, because you guys are the people who are part of the show, right? If you think that there's a content we should do, suggest it. If we can do it, we'll do it. If we cannot, we'll let you know why we cannot, because 
I mean, it involves a whole lot of money, movement, employing of people. Creative people are not cheap. They even go get an editor or a video cameraman. They are not cheap. And then football, especially sports, you need certain type of people to do it. What we know how to do well in the and the music and entertainment, but not really sports. So if you want to do sports, you need a certain type of people to do it. And sometimes it's hard to come by. But having said that, uh, it's been a great time having the honor to have you guys as uh, my partners, my friends. My, f I don't want to use the word fans. It's disrespectful, right? Let me let me be very honest. In this space, I don't I don't call it fans, but you guys are family. You guys are wonderful people. Thank you very much. My name, once again, is Idafi Manchester. I'm going to love to come in the one of us. Have a wonderful working week. For those of you who have no work, uh, keep grinding. Uh, there's something my mom used to say: when you don't have work, use the time to learn learn something that will give you work tomorrow. So use the time to learn something that will give you work tomorrow. For you that is working, uh, I, I also put this thing out when I used to work in Abrilla. I say, look, I can't complain about the pay, whether they're paying me or they're not paying me. I, I need to do the job. I'm going to do the job 100%. The day I don't feel like the pay is good enough, I should resign and let somebody else who would celebrate the pay and do the work do it well. I like to put in 110% all the time and anything that I do. And that's how I measure whether I will succeed at something or not. I think it's something you can also copy. But until then, until we meet again on this live stage on Wednesday, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, drop comments on the comment section, and don't forget to listen on www.elevatedtv.com forward slash radio. And if you're using an Android phone, please download the mobile application, Elevated TV Radio. One of the things that I guarantee you is we play the most uninterrupted music that you love on any radio platform. Have a wonderful day. Until we meet again. Bye-bye.